there, my name's Adam, and today I'm going to be uh, doing reviews of some of these leaf blowers that I own, and one of them is the Tanaka TRB, it's a gas power blower. Uh, it's uh, about 150 bucks, it's supposed to blow about 440 cubic feet a minute, 170 miles an hour, but that's only if you have the taper nozzle on, so we'll see how well that works. Over here we have an electric power, this is a weed eater barracuda. It's kind of old. I've had this one for a while. It's supposed to do about 195 miles an hour at 400 cubic feet a minute. And it was about 50 bucks when I bought it. And then there's this guy. This is the Husqvarna 150BT or 350BT, depending on where you pick it up. This one goes for about 300 bucks. It's supposed to go at about 180 miles an hour and move about 700 cubic feet a minute. And it's, a, it's also a backpack gas blower. So we've got uh, three different blowers, three different price ranges. And the specs on at least a couple of them look somewhat similar, but we'll see how well they perform when you actually take them out on the field. I'm just going to take like a bucket of leaves and dump them down and then blow the leaves away and see how well each one of these performs based on that. So without any further ado, I'm going to put some safety goggles on and some earplugs because these things can get pretty loud and go to town. All right, so first up, we got the electric blower. Look at that, starts right up. No pulling on any chains or any handles or anything like that. And it does a pretty good job, wouldn't you say? I'd say so. I mean, it's blowing the leaves away. They're going away. It's not exactly like, you know, a tornado hitting it or anything, but, you know, I guess it's a barracuda hitting it because that's supposed to be a weed eater barracuda. I don't know what a fish would be doing on a lawn attacking leaves, but hey, whatever, this one's doing it. And it does okay. But I mean, imagine if your whole yard was filled with leaves and sticks and branches and everything else. I don't know if I would want to have this thing. <laughs> Although, I did, so there you go. And here's the Tanaka. It's the gas-powered one. Seems to have similar um, properties as the other one. Had to uh, si or uh, prime the gas a little bit on it because it didn't start right off. Right off the bat there. Now we got it. Give a little bit of choke. And with the gas power one, you got to let it warm up a little bit. It doesn't reach, you know, its full speed until the uh, engine gets a little bit warm. That's why you'll hear it kind of ramp up a bit. There we go. Now, if you like annoying your neighbors, this is the way to go. Gas powered is loud. It's great. All right, let's see what the hell happens with these leaves here. Oh, look at that. Yeah, see, the specs on the electric one sound similar, but the reality is the gas powered one is a heck of a lot better. And one of the things also that I didn't mention yet is these handheld ones, they vibrate the hell out of your hand. And after a while, it gets really uncomfortable. I mean, it's like just a buzzing in your hand the whole time. All right, and here we go. This is a lesson in why you want to read the manual. Because I didn't, and it wouldn't start, and I was unable to figure out why. And I kept pulling on it, and I'm looking for a primer. There's no primer on it, but yet it wouldn't start. And I didn't know why until I went ahead and decided to examine things a little further. There's actually a little start guide on it, right? And I didn't see it. And you're supposed to turn the switch on on the handle over there. And notice it started, like, immediately. So, yeah. Definitely going to want to read the manual on these things. Unless you've used one before. And then I get the feeling they're probably going to be a lot a lot alike. And here's another thing that uh, I just kind of cut out because it's a little embarrassing. <laughs> it's the first time I've used this one. So, I mean, I know how to put on a backpack, right? But a backpack that's got an engine in it, yeah, that's a little bit different. And I was having a difficult time finding the strap. So, as I was sitting there floundering trying to find straps. We'll just go ahead and cut away. 
There we go. See? Got the straps on now. Now this thing. <laughs> yeah. This thing's way too much fun. Way, way too much fun. And it's way louder. So that makes it better, right? Look at that. See this thing here. This is what you want to go with. That is taking care of all that debris. No problem. And it's a lot more comfortable too. Not like the handheld one. Like I said, the handheld one really vibrates in your hand a lot. And it gets really, really uncomfortable. And you have to kind of switch hands. So, I don't know. I'm really glad I bought this. Because this one was a lot more comfortable to use. And it was a lot of fun too. Which is really silly, right? I mean, it's, it's a leaf blower. Why I get so excited? I don't know. It's a leaf blower that's gas powered and it's so big it's got a bit of get shoved into a backpack and you gotta wear it on your back. I mean that sounds pretty cool. I thought it was anyway. And I kinda went to town on the yard and was blowing everything that I possibly could off the lawn for a long time. So that's why I got away, because I just didn't want to stop. It was that much fun. Okay, so there you have it. Tested all three of those blowers. As you can see, the electric one, their start, the startup time on that is obviously nothing. You just turn it on and it works. Uh, the second one was, you know, sort of kind of difficult to start. The third one, it was the first time I'd ever started it. So it was a little bit of a learning curve. I had to figure out what the hell was going on because it didn't start right away. Uh, once I figured out that, you know, you actually have to have the switch turned to the on position on the handle, then it started right up and it worked just fine. Uh, since number three was, you know, the newest one, and it's the most powerful of them, and I hadn't tried it yet, I kind of went a little crazy and went around the whole yard and just basically blew the hell out of it for a little while, uh, just because it was it was so much fun. I mean, when you have a really large, powerful air blower like that, you, you can't help but just run around the yard and, and blow everything in sight away. So that's pretty much the summary of all the air blowers that uh, I have right now and I'm going to be getting rid of the small gas powered one just because it's kind of redundant at least with the electric power one I can use it out in some of the like the my workshop area where I can blow everything out I don't feel comfortable with starting a gas powered blower on in the inside of a home uh, that just doesn't sound like a very smart idea to me so I'm going to avoid that scenario uh, other than that it, it they all three of them did pretty well. Oh, well, they didn't. What am I talking about? <laughs> the big gas power one was awesome. I can't lie. That It was just way too much fun. So if you can uh, afford to go the extra mile or if your needs are going to need to be met by something that large, you're going to have to get one. I mean, the, the little one that I had, the little gas powered one that I had, it works. But I mean, you're going to spend like twice to three times the amount of time it would take to get the thing knocked out and get your job done and over with if you had used a large gas powered one. So my recommendation, you gotta get the power. The power is gonna win, hands down.